Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call the meeting to order. And uh, this is a special committee meeting, committee of the whole meeting for the administration and finance committee. The date is Wednesday, October the 30th, the time 6.30 p.m. Uh, I'd like to recognize a few folks in the gallery. Mayor Brett Todd is with us tonight, Councillor Ostrander. Uh, see the recorder and times reporter, Mr. Lowry. I don't know the lady at the back of the room. I don't, can't see the other gentleman, O'Connor. So, uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Chair is looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Councillor Hunter, for the secondary, Councillor Cameron. Those in favor? Agenda is approved as presented. Item number three on the agenda is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Are there any disclosures here this evening? None by me. Chair notes no disclosures, and so the minutes will slow reflect. Item number four on the agenda is a discussion item. Uh, and of course, the main purpose of the meeting here is to, is to, is to discuss arena cost sharing uh, issues. Um, and uh, so the first, uh, the staff has given us a little bit of background information to start from, and I think I'm just going to follow in the order the bullet points that are on the agenda here, and then we'll see where the discussion goes. Uh, the first uh, item up for discussion and review is the minutes of October the 15th. And uh, those minutes of October the 15th, uh, basically, uh, at item number two of eight, um, outlined uh, the proposal that we received from the town of Prescott on municipal modernization, reviews Mr. Or Mayor Todd's proposal, or I should say counter-proposal. Um, now, uh, first of all, before we go on then to any further, now does anybody want to spend any more time in review of that section uh, or that presentation. If I don't hear further discussion on that, I'm going to move right on through these bullet points and then see where we stand. Okay, so I'm not hearing anything. doesn't mean we can't come back to it. So I'm going on then to the next item that staff has prepared for us as background information, uh, which is the Council Resolution 2019-364 on municipal modernization, which our council passed on uh, September the 23rd. And um, so just by way of background, I just want to review with the table uh, that this proposal first appeared at the Admin Finance Committee of September the 10th, uh, where it was discussed broadly by the same group that's here, including our two volunteer members of the committee. Um, at that time, I didn't uh, actually call a motion to see whether the committee would be making a recommendation to the council, uh, but we had uh, sort of partial consensus around the table, but not full consensus. And uh, that proposal was the proposal that you're all familiar with. And uh, it, by virtue of the fact that it was on the table here, and it was discussed, it became a public document, and Mayor Todd was here at the time. Um, now, um, following the meeting on September the 23rd, uh, count the, 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 the CAO clerk at the time, uh, Ms. McKinstry, circulated this uh, proposal as a council document to the clerks of and the CAOs of Augusta and um, Prescott. Now, I understand that there was some discussion uh, at the um, Town Prescott Council meeting, uh, but basically working from the article which had appeared in the newspaper, and I'm not at all sure, and I know uh, on um, the previous meeting, October the 15th, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Tory and I uh, attempted to determine whether or not our proposal was fully discussed at the Prescott Council Chamber. But it, it, as, be that as it may, and whether or not it did happen is really none of our business, uh, but the proposal that Mayor Todd brought forward on uh, the 15th of October 
was basically, in my estimation, a counter proposal to the proposal which we had submitted. And, um, and we're regarding it as such, and, and as everyone knows, there are five points of divergence between the two, uh, between the two documents. Those five points of divergence may or may not become an issue for discussion here this evening. We'll see. Now, is there any questions or clarifications up to this point of the meeting? Okay, so we're all on the same footing at this point. All right, so now I'll proceed to the third bullet point, which is the ICIP joint application guidelines, uh, which I see that those guidelines were circulated on October the 24th, which is a week ago today. Uh, they were circulated to um, McKinstry and Grant here at our office. And um, I haven't had a great deal of time to review them, but uh, Deputy Mayor Tory, uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you just review the uh, 4.2 comment there? Yeah, the, the key uh, line that uh, I believe is applicable to tonight's discussion would be the very first uh, sentence where, or the first two sentences, that uh, joint projects between eligible applicants are encouraged, and that joint projects are those where each co-applicant contributes financially to the project or to the operation of that facility. Okay, now, <clears throat> we're not really involved other than to know that that's a sort of a Part of the guidelines of the application form, so for our our knowledge, are there any discussions or question points arising from that information? Okay, hearing none. I'm going to vote to go on now then to the next bullet point uh, on the agenda, which is the user rental hours. Now. As we learned at the PW Environmental Services Facilities meeting, uh, I think a week or so ago, uh, we do have the rather disturbing information coming from our facilities manager that 10% of the prime ice time in September uh, at both Spencerville and Cardinal, that is to say the combined prime ice time hours, 10% of those hours were not picked up by either the Minor Hockey Association nor the figure skating group, uh, which kind of feeds our concern uh, that we registered at the meeting on September the 23rd, kind of feeds our concern uh, that uh, the need of a third arena is, is, is questionable. So I just want to stop there for a minute to see if there are any questions with that because uh, staff has put another uh, document on the table here this evening which I think the purpose of this document is to show us the prime ice time hours that are available. Is, if I may, uh, through the CAO to the facilities manager, if I may, Mr. CAO, uh, to the facilities manager, uh, what you're telling us here in this sheet that we've just got tonight, these are the usual user rental hours by just those two users, right? Uh, yes, that is correct, Mr. Mayor. So we really don't get from this, um, well, tell us what this illustrates. Um, basically what I wanted to do was just to give a snapshot of um, the two major users at, at our facilities that being Subcombo Minor Hockey and Arena St. Lawrence Kings. So what I did was I went back to 2016 and then calculated the hours that they have rented in our facilities and then showed 2017. Obviously 2018, the numbers went uh, increased, but as you can see, the 2019 numbers for Subcombo Minor Hockey are 100 hours less, less uh, this year that they have asked for than we gave them in 2018. Uh, the Rito King uh, numbers, which is the uh, second chart below, uh, has the same time frame of the 216 to the 219, and their hours pretty much fluctuate and, and stay relatively the same throughout uh, the four years. 
Okay, so now I've, I've got to get the basis for this report in order that, that we get clear. Uh, this, this chart is based on the September 1 to March 15th season, is it? Yes, that is correct, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, our contracts uh, start from the first rental in September, whatever day that happens to be, through to the 15th of March. So they submit the rice requirements for the entire hockey season. Our hockey seasons go September through to March. Um, and so they submit their requirements for the entire season and they are all under contract. There's no cancellations of the, those ice slots throughout uh, that time period. Okay, they pay or use? That's correct. You, you use or pay? That's correct. Okay, now, so these then, uh, the 2019, the, the numbers that appear in the 2019 column, they're contracted hours for which we will be paid? That is correct, yes. Okay, now, so, are there any questions at this point with regard to rental hours? It's not, uh, just if I can go back to the report that you presented at the um, uh, a PW Facilities Environmental Services meeting which showed the 10% not picked up. Um, did, that, did that cover the same time, time period? Yes. Or was that to date? Uh, I took that report to be hours to date. The last report was for August and it was uh, July, August, September. Yes. Oh, that's right. And you showed us unused September hours. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, stop here for a minute and see where we go from here. Anybody have any comments, questions? From the chair? Who's that? Councilor Arnn. I'd just like to clarify at our last uh, discussion on this, it was uh, mentioned, uh, they showed Granville Minor Hockey that. Uh, Due to the loss of the arena, they couldn't have any any uh, tournaments uh, for their minor club there. And I wonder if uh, our through the chair for facility manager could verify whether this was fact or whether they really could have been allowed to have tournaments. Well, that's a good question. Uh, th so through the chair to the facilities manager. Yes. Um, Yes, back in uh, June when I was uh, preparing our uh, current hockey season, uh, South Granville Minor Hockey was offered opportunity to run tournaments, and they declined. No. Can, can we pursue that just a little bit further? Was there any reason given? Um, not to my knowledge. It was just that they weren't going to be running tournaments. That answer your question, yeah. Councillor. So, Mr. Mayor, through the chair, uh, I'd like to know, on, I'm looking at this report that was part of the package, right? The, Tonight's package? Yeah, user rental hours. Yes. Uh, in the column of, um, of uh, 2019, um, the question really is, these are the two main groups that are using our uh, facilities, but what is the capacity? What of those two facilities for rental? In other words, when does your prime time, which everybody wants to get, mm -hmm. uh, start and finish? Yeah. Like a weekday, it's not going to be 10 in the morning because uh, you're in school. Yeah, so would you tell us how you get to your prime time hours? Yeah, or how, you, how you calculate? Prime, uh, prime time hours are Monday to Friday from 4.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday and Sundays from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Okay, so then when you calculate prime hours for a month, that is you do it on a day-to-day -day basis and just accumulate them to the end of the month? That is correct. Okay. So when you tell us that 10% of the prime time hours are not picked up, mm -hmm. it's 10% of those hours between 4.30 and 11, Monday to Friday, and 7 to 11, Saturday, Sunday. That is correct. Mr. Bradley, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, now, so we're at, I'm, I'm holding at this item for a minute to, to give lots of opportunity for discussion here. Okay, so now then I'm going to move to the next bullet point. 
which is the Arena Financial Reports. Now, uh, the, the briefing note does indicate, and I, I want to get this out in the public, so I'm going to refer to the briefing notes. Um, Actually, I, I think I'm going to take a minute and, and highlight the briefing note by actually reading it. On October 15th, the Town of Prescott made a presentation to the committee with respect to potential of sharing arena operating costs. The presentation from the Town of Prescott indicated that the Cardinal Arena's revenue decreased in 2018. This decrease was related to the decrease of the donation from the Port of Johnstown $19,000 and is not attributable to the number of hours of ice rental. So uh, when that uh, point that our arena rentals, or excuse me, that our arena rev revenues had decreased was brought to my attention, I asked the staff what could be the possible explanation. So just to refresh everybody's member remembrance around the table, when the ingredient center was built, it was agreed that the Port of Johnstown would make a contribution to the capital and interest payments on an annual basis, starting with this amount and then declining each year until it became to zero. And so the differential in the contribution between, uh, I guess it would have been 17 and 18, was the $19,000 that's referred to in this first paragraph of the briefing note. Now, the printout goes, or the briefing note goes on to say, attached are the printouts of the 2017-2018 arena financial reports that show the breakdown of arena revenue and operating expenses. <coughs> to demonstrate the financial impact of the closure of the Leo Boyvin Arena, the comparison of ice rental revenue based on the hockey season needs to be completed. Attached are the financial reports for 2017-2018 compared to the 2018-2019 ice rental seasons at both arena, which demonstrates the increase in ice rentals after the closure of the Leo Boyvin Arena in the fall of 2018. The total combined ice rental revenues for both arenas increased by $44,000. So that was the increase in ICE rental revenues. $44,531 from the previous hockey season. However, with the increase in the ICE rentals, operating costs such as wages and benefits also increased as the township hired part-time staff to assist in the facility's maintenance. Building and equipment repair costs were lower in 2018 compared to 2017, which contributed to the overall decrease in operating loss. So then you have the numbers. Uh, now, th these numbers are very, very close to the numbers that we've been working with since we first met with uh, the Prescott Arena fundraisers on uh, <coughs> March the 12th. And uh, there is one uh, difference of a, of a $30,000 which appears on this report, which the treasurer has just pointed out to me, uh, probably shouldn't been, have been included as an operating cost. So these, these numbers are not as accurate as the ones we've been using all along because the $30,000 uh, that appears under the Spencerville Arena uh, operating uh, column is actually a transfer to reserves, which is not really an operating cost. So we're back, uh, we're back then to the uh, to the chart that we've been using all along. Say again, no? Just, yeah, yeah, that's just yes. where you were. yeah. Does everybody see that? Yeah. So you understand. The, so now, so now, if you if you like, I can review this latest information that we have from the treasurer uh, and compare it back to the, um, uh, the, the, the presentation that we approved uh, at our council meeting on September the 23rd. 
Now, does everybody have the chart that we've been working with since September 23rd? Yes. Okay, if everybody's got it, I just want to do the comparison between the chart we've been using on September, the, the chart that we've been using all along, and the actual revenue and expenditures that we see from this most updated report, uh, just uh, which we received from the treasurer just today. So, I'm going to go to the chart, and, and I'm going to start with the Spencerville Arena in 2017. Total cost to taxpayers in 2017 was 103 94 which is exactly what the treasurer shows us in the report today. Everybody get that? Yes. All right, now, Spencerville Arena for 2018. Total cost to the taxpayers, 84000 319.75, and if you take 30,000 off the 114, that's that I've already explained was a really a transfer to reserve. This is not an operating cost. The total cost to the taxpayers was 84,694.75. Differs by peanuts. Okay, now I'm going to look at the Cardinal Arena, and the Cardinal Arena. Looking at the 2017 costs, right to the bottom line, looking at our chart that we've been working with all along, cost to our taxpayers, 342, 327.12. Looking at the treasurer's submission to date, exact same number. All right, now looking at the Cardinal Arena for 2018, the chart says total cost to the taxpayers, 355, 675, 64, and 354, 550, 64, a difference of $1,000. So again, the chart that we've been using all along is, is very, very, very accurate and very illustrative of the point that we've been making. Okay, now further questions with regard to that aspect of tonight's discussion. We all on the same page here so far. Okay. Now I've run out of agenda points, so I'm opening the floor for discussion. And unless somebody jumps in, I'm going to bring a couple of other pieces of information to the table. Anyone? Anyone raising issue? Raising question, raising comment. I'm good with the numbers. Okay, I'm going to bring a piece of information to the table because, in some senses, in some in some sense, I know that some of us feel a. a I'm, I'm going to say. A, a sense, a, a, a bit of time pressure. So I'm passing around a letter, I'm going to read it in a minute, I'm passing around a letter that was hand delivered to the town of Prescott on April the 27th, 2018. Now the Leo Boyvin Arena, the closure was announced in August of 2018, matter of fact it was announced during the AMO convention, but as soon as I returned from the AMO convention, I had this letter prepared. It's addressed to the Mayor and Council, Town of Prescott, 360 Dibble Street West, Prescott, Ontario. Dear Mayor Todd and members of Council, I am writing to let you know how distressed Township Council is to hear of the sudden closure of the Leo Boyvin Arena. I know that our Township staff have been working hard to find ways to accommodate the user groups who have been affected. Please be assured that those efforts will have the full support of Township Council and that we are prepared to help in any way possible. We encourage your town staff to reach out to facilities manager Mike Spencer or recreation coordinator Annie McLean for assistance if needed, signed by myself as mayor, and date stamped at the town of Prescott on August 27th. Now, that letter has never been acknowledged and never been, to my, to my extent, acknowledged. And so, consequently, I, I don't feel the constraint of a time pressure because 
there's been the period of time since October 18 till now to kind of deal with this issue. Now, the first time that it actually came before us in a formal sort of way was when Deputy Mayor Tory and I were approached <coughs> by uh, Judy Bree and uh, uh, Mr. Dave Beatty, uh, who were in the process of arranging uh, funding uh, for the new boy, Leo Boy Event Arena. And we met with those folks on March the 21st, 2019. And it was at that meeting on March the 21st, 2019, that we presented our chart that showed what our taxpayers are paying in arena costs. And we did not directly answer their request for a contribution with a yes or a no, we addressed their request with a question. And the question very simply to the two fundraisers was, how much more, well, excuse me just one second, the total cost to the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal taxpayers in 2017 was four hundred and forty six thousand two hundred and eighty six dollars and pennies and the total cost in 2018 was four hundred and thirty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and pennies so we said to the two fundraisers how much more money do you think that our taxpayers should be expending on arena costs. Operating capital doesn't matter. How much more do you think our taxpayers should be spending? Now I think we went a bit further than that and I'm going to let Deputy Mayor Deschamps, if you would, kind of illustrate where we attempted to go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we uh, had a, a very good discussion uh, that day, um, until it got, you know, through through the presentation of, uh, you know, what the arena meant to the town, what it meant to the user groups, um, you know, sort of the pitch from from the fundraisers, and the discussion changed a little when it when it came time for um, uh, for the concept because the the concept was was clearly laid out and, and it was placed in front of us, and here's. Here's the new Leo, and and we we kind of took a step back and, and we said, well, you know, you're here asking us for for our help and for some for, you know for some contribution, some capital, and um, what? It's completely true. We've never asked for capital. Excuse me. This is a this is a council committee meeting. So, so at, at that time, uh, it was pretty clear that that was what, what the ask was. And um, we made it very clear to, to Dave and Judy at that time that uh, without any input on um, design and, and location of, of that facility and, and what it actually was going to be, um, you know that, that we really weren't weren't interested, and and Dave said, well, we'll have to go back and we'll have to have a discussion and and um, see what we can do. Would 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 you would you settle for some input on programming? And and we made it very clear that no, that that you know that wouldn't be it. But you know our door's always open, and and we're we're always uh, willing to listen. But in, unless there was some uh, availability for us to have some input on, on design and location especially, uh, that we didn't really see any way that, uh, that we would move forward uh, in that discussion. We had a, a very good discussion with Dave and Judy about um, the history behind uh, a lot of collaborative efforts and, um, you know, I think they were um, uh, interested in, in continuing the conversation further. Um, no. Really sure if I have much else to add other than that from my from my recollection. Okay, so that gets us up to March the twelfth. <coughs> now, between March the twelfth and now, there's been we know that there's been a number of uh, meetings between the mayors, the deputy mayor, and the CAO. I think there was one of those, 
then there was a couple of other meetings. That was the three mayors, the three deputy mayors, and the three CAOs. And the topic of arena funding did come up in a, in a brief sort of way, but didn't really gain any traction or any follow-up. Uh, determination of follow-up or determination of how to follow-up. Then subsequent to that meeting, there were a couple of meetings of just the three mayors and the three CAOs. Uh, but again, those topics kind of centered around municipal modernization from the point of view, could we focus on somehow trying to share library costs or could we focus some way of trying to share equipment costs or could we focus some way of trying to find uh, efficiencies with our fire departments? And they were sort of very broad-ranging discussions, and we did leave it to the three CAOs to try to do some work with the finances to see if the finances, if the CAOs could glean any uh, learnings from the financings that would uh, help us in decision-making. Uh, those discussions between the CAOs have been on and off, on and off, uh, I think they focused on library for a while, but my understanding is that in the final decision, the CAOs uh, decided not to proceed down that road. Now, uh, Ms. McKinstry is here. She was part of those discussions, and if you don't mind, through the CAO, uh, would you like to make a, just a comment or two about how those discussions were going? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the the uh, CAOs did meet with library board chairs during their summer months. Of course, we know that library boards don't meet during the summer, so there was a bit of a delay in getting a response back from the board chairs as to whether or not they were on board with some of the suggestions that we had put forward. And um, while no one objected to anything, there wasn't a, a great deal of move forward on that. Um, we've had subsequent discussions with respect specifically to building and bylaw and also recently on, on some transit initiatives and uh, you know, fitting it in around our other regular meetings. I wouldn't say that they've completely stalled, but it's, it's not moving at a pace that I, uh, that I would call quick. <laughs> now, now, you know that the purpose of our meeting here this evening is to, is to discuss shared arena costs, mm -hmm. and you haven't commented on that. No, I, we really haven't, uh, we really haven't discuss that at the CAO level uh, too much other than to catch up with each other on who's had what meetings at which council committee and whether or not there was any motions passed. My understanding is that, that our motion in September, um, but that there has not been any specific motion coming from Augusta Township yet. Um, and of course you were here for Mr. or Ms. rather Mayor Todd's presentation last month. So. Okay, so any questions arising from that discussion? All right, so that brings us more or less to where we are now. Um, and I'm not just too sure uh, where to proceed, how, how to proceed, uh, other than to open the floor here and, and let each of the members have um, a comment. And, uh, Looking around to see a hand, so see who's going to be first to make comment. Okay, so mine's just more of a of a clarification uh, thing uh, when it comes back to um, uh, the the guideline, the ministry guideline um, uh, for the four four point two uh, section it says that it, it contributes financially to the project or to the operation of the facility. However, you flip it over. And you get into level uh, number four and bullet point four point one for eligible uh, projects one uh, a a project must underscore include a capital component a project may also include pre-constructed planning and design work however planning and design work are not eligible as standalone projects so those two um, points seem a little Am I wrong in thinking that it's contradictory? Because in the, in 4.2 it says or for the operation, and then in 4.11a it says must, and it's actually underscored. So, well, it must include a capital component. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. the the capital could be. I mean, that's not operations, right? Okay. Yeah. Fair in, in 4.2 it says or or the operation of the facility. So so I, for me there's a tiny little bit of confusion. Um, 
because you know if, if 4.11a is correct, we have to have capital on the capital on the table. Uh, right. And and if 4.2 is correct, then it and it can be just a, a shared service agreement. So without knowing that. Okay. Well, again, we're just, just seeing, point. Yeah, we're seeing this for the first time, and we haven't been involved in the right. nitty gritty of it. Other comments around the table, Mr. Bradley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> After our last meeting, uh, I decided to kind of do a little homework and investigation, and I just want to throw some data out onto the table for everybody to consider. Um, and this, going to the uh, government's 2016 census, the three townships, uh, sorry, the town of Prescott and the two townships have a population of 18,670. Um, in 2016, um, the age group 0 to 14 were 2,710 children, and 15 to 19, 1,115. And that amounts to a total of 3,825 youth, or about 20% of the total population. Uh, Mr. Robertson has done some research as well. I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but okay. um, <clears throat> Canada-wide, uh, they estimate, and I don't know where he got the statistics, but about 22% of, of youth play hockey. So. Uh, the third 3,825 uh, is the total, and so we, not all of them play hockey, obviously. Um, we don't know what the number is, but I would say it's probably uh, substantial out of that. And um, so we have the two arenas that try to accommodate that requirement. Um, second point. When uh, Mayor Todd uh, made his presentation, I don't believe he, he, he specifically stated a capital number, but there are several newspaper articles that have been in the press recently where the number of 12 million has been kind of floated around. And they have an additional, they have a, go a fundraising goal of 3 million, which we know about and they've reached about half of that. Um, the point here is that uh, if you look at the formula for the, um, the grant money and the three million, assuming they reach the three million uh, fundraising target, uh, Prescott will get a new arena with no or very little debt. And I believe that probably leads to the requirement in their presentation of not wanting any capital. Just a point. Um, arena costs in general, and there's not a lot of, like it's hard to get data from um, <coughs> specific places, but you can go to places like newspapers and so on. And if you look at surrounding or nearby communities, um, and recent news going back year or two, there are periodically articles which talk about arena costs. Um, and I picked uh, two, uh, the Smith Falls Arena Complex. Smith Falls consists of two arenas. The new arena, which I don't know if any of you have been in, is quite a nice facility. Um, it has some of the um, uh, accoutrements that uh, Prescott would like to incorporate in their arena. And um, I think Smith Falls is about 12 years old or 10 years old. They have a youth arena which also goes back tw over 25 years, which has been refurbished. So the, of the two arenas, they serve five municipalities uh, surrounding Smith Falls. Uh, I, I can name them, but I won't, I won't bother to take the time to do that. Um, in 2016, they had a revenue of 529,000 and an operating cost of 909,000. Both of them. Um, that's both of them, yes. 
Um, the, um, the way they share with those five municipalities has changed, was changed in 2017. Prior to 2017, they shared on a user basis. In other words, if players came in from this geographic area, there would be a charge associated with each player for that geographic area. They found that this was laborious to track, uh, a lot of administration to keep uh, tabs on, and they moved into a different uh, a different kind of uh, sharing arrangement. And um, they now share on a, ba on a basis of a weighted assessment model. This was developed by um, some professionals along with one of the um, chief financial officers, I think, of Smith's Falls, but um, they, it took some time, they developed it, they got the approval of the five communities and uh, went along with that um, methodology. Um, once it was implemented, they still had a lot of um, disagreement about the bill that was to be paid, even though um, they had, it seemed that they had worked through quite a lot of detail to, um, to get to that point. Um, and of course the other one, uh, the area that I compared, uh, the point here is that sharing agreements, um, they're not easily managed. They, um, there's a lot of disagreement and uh, surprise and, you know, lack of willingness to pay the bill to the, to the host uh, uh, facility. So uh, the second one I looked at was Leeds and Thousand Islands of Gananoque. And they had uh, quite a controversy in 2016 over the shared cost. I don't know the basis on which they uh, share the cost, whether it's a, an assessment or a head count or whatever. Um, so I'm just putting these out as warning signals that, you know, we may want to take into account whenever we, um, and if we do, get into considering a sharing arrangement. Um, so that's uh, just a few additional points, Mr. Mayor. Well, I think the main takeaway that you mentioned about uh, just before the end was that these agreements are, are um, are complex yeah. and difficult, and uh, it's one thing to arrive at a formula for sharing, <coughs> it's another thing to administer it and execute it, That's right. and uh, it takes some time to put the agreements together as well as to uh, uh, implement the execution. Uh, okay, any other speakers? Thank you very much, Mr. Bradley. Any other speakers? speakers? Mr. Robertson, I got the impression from Mr. Bradley that you were going to provide some... Hi, it was just statistics I went in and I was looking at Canada as a whole and the number of, uh, the number, and first off, the first thing they said in this site that I got on was that, of course, the participation in minor hockey was, was, was falling off the chart, it was diminishing each year. And uh, uh, they gave a... Uh, a percentage of all the children aged 5 to 14, and 42% are involved with soccer, 24% swimming, 22% uh, hockey, 16% basketball, so those, and, and it goes on, and then they sort of minored after that, but other sports. What was the, what was the hockey again? Uh, the hockey was 22%, swimming 24, and soccer 42. Yeah, so 22 percent of Mr. Bradley's 3,825 would give us kind of a number. Yeah, and uh, we already heard from a uh, previous presentation that the registration in the South Granville Minor Hockey Association this year, I think, is down 10 percent is the number that was yeah. been given. Um, so now, uh, further input, additional questions, Councillor Cameron. Yeah, I, I just want to pick, just picking up a little bit on Mr. Bradley's uh, comments. That I just want to put out there that of our total expenses to run both both arenas, um, 
50% of that is involved with staff, whether it be staff and, uh, and pension and, and so on. But when, when, all the, when all of, we'll say, the perks are paid, it's approximately 50% of our, of our operating expense. Um, that's not going to get very much cheaper in, in, in the future. As, as, as we move as we move forward, so I just want to put that out on the table. No, in other words, well, and I mean, I think we know enough from our budget discussions to know that we've um, kind of pushed the staff to the. I'm not going to say we've, we've pushed them to the breaking point, but I hear tell that we've cut a lot of fat from the bone. <laughs> We're running a pretty. Pretty uh, frugal, op not frugal, but tight operation. Um, now, further comments, additional comments. Where am I going here now? The chair is looking for direction. Councillor Hunter. Well, we've had a lot of information. We've been gathering all the time here, and uh, we can see by our, our chart here that uh, really the demand for ice hours have been falling every year. So I know it's great to uh, want arenas, but uh, there's a limit along the way where where do you justify having a, having another arena in the area when we haven't got all the ice hours rented in the two arenas that we do have. So well and that's the conundrum that that we've kind of um, that we've kind of focused on at this point, uh, up to this point in time. Further comments, Councillor yeah, Campbell? Yeah, and, and just to pick up on, on what uh, Councillor Hunter, Hunter said, we, we heard at the, at, the, uh, at the open meeting a while ago that certain groups were, could use more ice time. They're looking for it, looking for it. And here we have 10% that's not even used, so that what that tells me is these people are just looking for more convenient hours to uh, to, to do their operations where we have 10% wide open. So I, I concur with uh, Councillor Hunter uh, on his, uh, on, on his uh, information. Okay, so the chair's still looking for direction. Um, there is... Um, Can I go sideways on that, Mr. Mayor? Certainly. Um, you're saying that we don't need another arena, obviously, we here because of the ice. In the Meyer hockey, um, we have two arenas. The life expectancy of a, of, a, of the uh, plant is thirty years. I mean that's that's for sure. Spencer Arena was built in 1967. 1994, they had to put in a new floor. That went 27 years. So now we're going from uh, from 1994 to 2020. That's 26 years. So I think, if, in all honesty, we know that we're going to have major problems with our expensive arena because of that. Age is, and we're going to have a big investment or a big decision to be made. And if you do lose your, light, your ice, it's not like changing a light bulb. So if it happens in January, we'll probably shut down for a year or two. And I feel we've been, that this is a great opportunity as operating only. And I, I like Mayor Todd's the other day, except I think it's very simple. I don't know why we're trying to make it complicated. Is if we go 33% across the board in operations. And we can sign a 10 year deal. And then after that 10 years, renegotiate. It doesn't have to be forever and ever. I mean, they're not going to get an arena until at least 2023, 2024. If we sign a deal with operation costs only for 2020, 2030. I just want to throw my two cents in. Well, basically, that's the proposal that we put on the table on, on September the 23rd. That proposal we put on the table on September the 23rd. About bring uh, on. Well, I mean, uh, there, no. there, I think there was a, a capital component in there, but I mean, it was a proposal on the table. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. <clears throat> and I mean, 
the, count, the, the question is, uh, we have a counter proposal, and we want to get into the nitty gritty of, um, of trying to, uh, to deal with that here tonight. I guess that, and, and I, I can't for the life of me determine uh, whether or not there is a, whether or not there is a timing issue here. Uh, and the reason I say that is because in the mayor's column on October 23rd, which is a week ago today, um, uh, Mayor Todd makes the comment, a meeting has been scheduled for Monday, November the 4th, where town and fundraising committee representatives will meet with Minister of Infrastructure Lori Scott in Toronto to firm, formally turn over our application. Uh, given the work that has been done, I don't have to go much farther. Um, the, the point is that the, the, the date has been set for the, for the, um, for the um, submission of the application. And we're not part of that application at this point in time. And it doesn't, I mean, in, in my estimation, we have no potentiality to be part of it by uh, you know, five days from today. So I don't really see any need uh, for uh, time pressure here. Uh, I did originally on, uh, on September the 23rd. I thought, I didn't realize that, that we're getting as close as we are. But uh, I mean, I don't think there's any possibility of coming to any kind of an agreement be between now and Monday, that's for sure. So I don't know the point of continuing these discussions at this point. Any comment on that comment? I don't know any comment. I have, have uh, we did put a proposal forward, but the proposal hinges on all three municipalities being on board, and so far, from what I, we hear, Augusta hasn't even brought this to a council meeting yet to discuss it fully and what they're prepared to do, and I think our proposal hinged on the, uh, it had to be a, three-party agreement or nothing, so... Yes, our proposal did uh, envisage that it would be a three-party agreement. Uh, yes, you're right. And it also hinges because I don't think we, we uh, as a township, we've never had a problem with ice sharing, sharing <laughs> the because they had their rink and they operated their rink and we operated our two rinks, but Augusta has basically been having a free ride for 40 years <laughs> on both Prescott and, and was Cardinal and was Edwardsburg, and it's Edwardsburg Cardinal, but they had the benefit of all the recreation with no cost, basically, to them. So, like, I don't know where we go until Augusta finally puts up here, so. Well, I, I spoke to, um, to Mayor Malanka, called from Germany on Monday night at 525, and I understand that, that he has he either intends to go as part of the delegation on Monday or is at least considering it, has been invited. Uh, now, he didn't indicate uh, to me for, uh, for, uh, firmly uh, whether he would be going as part of the delegation or not, uh, but uh, I got the impression that, that he's still looking for a way of trying to put something together uh, and that he does feel that there is but I'm not going to speak for him or his council, but he is looking for ways to keep the doors open, if I can put it that way. And as far as, as Deputy Mayor Deschamps has already stated, our, you know, we're, we're always available for discussion. But I don't think we're going any place by Monday night. Well, I don't know where we're addressing now holding the council meeting between now and, now and Monday, so really how, how does the mayor go forward with a proposal from his township until he's had the approval from his council, so. Well, that's not our, not our business, really. Okay, um, chair's looking for a direction. Can I just ask for clarification on something? Uh, okay, through the chair. Uh, Mike, you know, Councillor uh, Dillabaugh raised the, the question of lifespan on, on Spencerville Arena. Do we have uh, a report available that Outlines, um, you know, he's suggesting that it's that its days are done. Um, that's not my understanding. Uh, do we uh, 
have a, a, a lifespan or a, or a report that suggests uh, the lifespan. We just put a brand new chiller in it. I, I hope that, uh, that you know, it's still got a few years left in. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, or through the Chair, to you. Um, in 2016, we replaced the header trench, and then this year, we, uh, this past summer, we replaced the chiller. Um, I'm just working with some public refrigeration now to give us a, um, a five to eight year plan on the remaining equipment that's in the uh, facility as far as the, uh, the compressors. We have a 50 horse compressor and a 30 horse compressor. The 50 horse is about eight years old and was installed. It was a used one that we were able to get through some cold refrigeration. That will be, will need to be replaced um, within the next couple of years, just based on hours. Um, it's still in good shape though. So the floor itself is in good shape once we uh, replace the header trench in 2016. Yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, to answer my, my question, do, you know, for a foreseeable future, it's, it's in good shape? At the current, uh, current uh, time and the current state of the equipment, yes, right now it is, yes. And if I can follow up on that, we are getting five-year structural reports as well, are we not? Yes, that is correct. That will be due in uh, 2021. Will be the next five years uh, structural review. But all of our structural reviews up to this point in time have been clean, clean bill of health. That is correct. The last two that we've had um, three years ago, and then five years prior to that, it was just general maintenance, uh, clean up, um, a little bit of uh, scraping and painting, and that. But the actual structure itself is still in good shape. Councillor Cameron, you wanted to? Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to uh, point something out for clarification. Um, the the old Cardinal Arena was built in, in 1968, approximately 1968, finished about 1970, um, and it was it was torn down in I think 2012 or 2014 or something like that. And I got to tell you, because I was uh, involved heavily with the uh, Cardinal District Community Center Board that ran that arena for for many many years, well, right up to the end to be quite truthful, uh, that pad was excellent. The day, the day the building came down around it, that pad was absolutely The cement perfect. pad. The cement pad, absolutely. Now, maybe to, with, maybe with today's methods of construction and whatnot, there are maybe things done not the way they were done in 1968, but that pad was, was absolutely perfect. Okay, but the, no sorry, cracks in it or... Okay, so you're applying that to the sensible? I'm, I'm just applying that that don't, you know, that, that's approximately 40 years for goodness sakes that, that yeah. I just, okay. Oh, I see that. Okay. I'm just going by the duration. That, that, yeah, okay. You know, that, uh, that I, and I think, I think the Spencerville pad is probably in just as good a shape. And, and uh, just refresh my memory here, uh, the, the, um, the, the plant itself, can, can you give us a little bit more detail of the plant? Yeah, um, yes, Mr. Mayor, the, the plant um, is not a direct amount. Ammonia in a, con, in, a, in a controlled sealed room. Yeah, the, the ammonia is in the chiller. Yeah. Because I, 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 mean, I, I, want to, I appreciate getting that out because I know during the past years that I've been on council, I mean, we've been pretty attentive in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in our responses to what was required there. Councillor Hunter. Uh, just to mention too, when the floor was replaced in, in the arena there, uh, it wasn't due to the fact that the floor was breaking. It was due to the fact that when it was poured that on the one side of the arena, it wasn't properly excavated, and there's three or four large boulders underneath there that kept heaving and, and pushing the cement up and tipping the boards, which was corrected when it was re-poured and re-leveled with the new technology put in when it was put in. And the, that floor is in excellent shape. It never moves. I, iota, there the boards stay perfect and everything. But there's absolutely no foreseeable future that that pad's going to cause us any trouble. So it, it was so much fun when we were kids to you know do the. Sorry, I had to. Sorry, I had to. Okay, side. so I've got to get the meeting back here. Okay. The chair's looking for direction as to where to go. Uh, it's pretty obvious to me. Uh, I'd like, if I'm wrong, please tell me. But it's pretty obvious to me that we're not going to be able to put an agreement in place here between now and Monday, 
even if even if we accepted uh, Prescott's proposal exactly as it's written, we would not be able to get a legal agreement in place. Um, and uh, I don't know that we would, we, we would want to proceed in any other manner. I think, Mr. Bradley, you have already outlined that even in the two examples that you use, those are legal agreements that are in place. That's correct. They were written and constructed uh, in, in, in a proper format. Yeah, yeah. There was legal uh, counsel involved in the preparation. Um, I don't know, I guess, uh, um, just to follow up on your comment, uh, um, if, um, if there's a, a, an appetite for sharing, we haven't, I don't think we've con even concluded that yet, because as Councillor Hunter said, Augusta has kind of been a silent partner to a certain extent up until now. And um, there's been expression uh, from Mayor Malenka that he kind of would like to see his council get involved, but they haven't debated it or anything else. So um, I think we're at kind of a, a stall position until such time as we can clarify, um, you know, what what's going to happen uh, with uh, with Augusta, and um, assuming that uh, they go all gung-ho, and uh, assuming that we uh, are gung-ho, and that the town of Prescott's gung-ho, then I think we could, at that time, enter into uh, broad discussions as per whatever the agreed arrangement would be. You know, I think, it, as with any negotiation, we, our proposal and their proposal, we'd have to you know, massage the two of them and get to a point where we're agreement, we're in agreement to continue to draft out clauses and so on. But that's, in my view, quite a way down the road yet. But the whole thing hinges, as you've indicated, the whole thing hinges on the main premise. Do we have, at this table, an appetite for sharing? That's right. Yeah. That's, that's the issue. And, uh, and, I, you know, I, I, let's just deal with that issue just for a second so that I can know where everybody's head is. Uh, what is the appetite for sharing? And I'm just going to ask everybody to give me an indication, up or down, yes or no, whether they have an appetite. Because if there's no appetite, then really, we really don't have any further to go. Now, if there is an appetite, uh, then, of course, I think your main, main point, let's see where Augusta comes first. Now, maybe I'm getting it back, backwards. Maybe we should be waiting for Augusta. So, let's... So... I'm very yeah, hungry, we, Mr. Mayor. Also. Very what? <laughs> I'm very hungry. <laughs> also. Uh, okay, so we can, we can deal with, do we wait for Augusta? Or we need to determine whether we have an appetite. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, determine the appetite. Well, let's... Okay. All right, let's just see. Let's just see where the determination of appetite is. Each person around the table, give me an indication. Mr. Bradley, where do you stand? Very weak. Weak. <laughs> weak appetite. I, I, I'm going to put you in the middle then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Robertson, where do you stand? Well, I'd be willing to listen to what, what there is on the table to offer, and uh, it, we're not signing a piece of paper, so it's all negotiable. He's hungry, Mr. Mayor. He's what? No, he's <laughs> hungry. <laughs> he's mildly weak. <laughs> Councillor Hunter. Well, I'm, i got to see the proposal. The first thing I basically want to see is if we're work, working with three arenas or whether we're working with two arenas. And then, where we're talking capital here or where we're ta talking just operating. So, operating, I'm 100%. But I think we got to get, but it's, Augusta's the key factor here for me. But I've never had a problem with, with our cost sharing with Prescott as far as they go for operating their arena. They've got an arena to pay for all the time. Their taxpayers are paying for an arena too, but we got to get, one off the fence here, but we got to. I 
think it all hinges on where they get their grant and where we're talking three arenas we're sharing or where we're talking two arenas that we're sharing. So. Okay, I'm putting you on the yes column for operating only. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Terry, uh, Deputy Mayor Deschamps. Um, uh, I think everybody knows that I that I do have a, a strong appetite for um, uh, uh, sharing and, and collaboration um, uh, when it comes to um, a service agreement. I just don't see um, the uh, this deadline that that we've been working for for. Year of August 27th, 2018, uh, March 21st, 2019, uh, doing discussions about uh, asking uh, if we can help, uh, continuing to ask if we can have some input on, on design uh, and location so that you know we, we can support a build. Um, service agreements, if if they uh, benefit all of our all of our people, are are good things. They're not. They're not bad things, but I don't think a service agreement should hinge uh, solely on whether we sign our name on an application. If, if there's uh, a service agreement that makes sense, then the service agreement makes sense, but I don't think it should uh, be a, a full negotiation tool uh, on whether or not we sign an agreement. So. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cameron. I'm, uh, I'm very weak. Councillor Dillava. You very what? Week. Yeah. Week. Yeah. I'm very hungry, uh, Mr. Mayor on operations. Okay. All right. <coughs> you, Mr. Mayor? No. Nope. Mayor's in the middle. Mayor will go whichever way the majority goes on this one. <laughs> but I'm going to say this one, this much. <laughs> I, I really do hope that when we come down to a decision at the table, and I, I won't, I won't uh, put the same pressure on, on our two volunteer members, but when we come down to a decision at the council table, we'll be unanimous. That's what I'm hoping. I think that uh, I think that's important. Uh, I think that you know our, our taxpayers are looking for they're looking for this to be the right thing, and the only way they're going to feel it it's the right thing is if is if we're in agreement. Now I'm going to raise one last issue. And, and I'm just going to put it on the table, uh, and then I think we're going to end this meeting probably by about 10 too, depending on what the reaction is to this next question. And this next question, I'm not necessarily looking for a reaction. But if, 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 if you would like to offer me a comment, I'd like to hear it. It has been said to me by a taxpayer, you folks are spending a lot of time talking about municipal modernization and how you might possibly work together as a group or even as, heaven forbid, a South Grenville single municipal entity. So this taxpayer says to me, if we were one municipality, with one council sitting at a council table, would we be discussing the construction of a third arena right now? I'm just going to leave that hanging unless somebody wishes to pick up on it. Nobody picks up on it. I'm about to move on. It's an interesting question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you heard the population numbers. You're looking at 18,000, 19,000 people. Um, <clears throat> and that's population. That's not tax base. Um, I doubt that uh, there's many municipalities or uh, constructs within the province of Ontario that have three arenas that have that kind of population. I think you used 18,000. Yeah, it was 18 and change. But, um, so, um, I think that, I don't know, like we, we don't get a lot of flack from our population, but if you took and uh, that became a big focus in 
in a community like that with 18,000 people, you might get a lot of blowback. Like you'd be saying, well, what the heck's going on? You got two arenas and you can't function with two? And you want to spend 12 or 13 million dollars to build a third one? Get a life. I mean, we haven't even addressed the issue that if the town of Prescott doesn't get the grant, what happens? No rain. Well, we, and again, we can't, I mean, that's, that's, we can't right speak on. for them. But yeah, but, yeah, that's their business. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, um, I mean, it's, it's a coin toss, you know, yep. whether they get it or not, so. Any other comments before mm -hmm. I call a motion to adjourn? Good discussion, wide ranging. Just if I can clarify one one thing for myself, and, and I, I just think it's important that I, I clarify it. So um, I'm in. I'm, I want to make sure that it's clear that I'm I'm in support of, of shared service agreements, uh, not just in uh, relationship to arena costs, but recreation uh, costs, whatever other shared service agreements that we can come up with. Um, what I do not support and what I, I don't want uh, to put my name on is, is an application um, uh, as an Edwardsburg Cardinal uh, representative supporting an arena design proposal and location that we have zero say in and, and doesn't accurately represent our taxpayers' wishes. Okay, I, I see your point. In other words... I just want to make sure that that's clear. It, it, uh, it was called in a previous uh, life uh, in Boston someplace where they held a tea party. Uh, what was it called? Yeah. Boston Tea Party. No, no, it was Boston was it? <laughs> Representation by Population. That's what it was called. Um, okay, I'm just passing around these clippings. Just um, to go down? Yeah, just to go down. And. Um, so I'm at item number five on the agenda, which is council inquiries notice of motion. I think we've pretty had a pretty good go around here tonight. I'm at item number six on the agenda, which is a question period. Anyone has any questions? Um, so where does it go from here? So this is a, does this go to your next council meeting, and you're going to talk about it as a full council, or? What, what happens now? Okay, well, the way I read the table is that uh, there's a lot of waiting to see what Augustus is going to do. And the appetite here is weak, but uh, depending on what Augustus is going to do, maybe this might come together, but who knows? Augustus is supposed to meet on Friday. Yes, and, and the and the topic that we did not discuss here at this table, because it's their business, uh, and we may, depending on whether and, and which way they're going to go, the issue that will be raised is what are we expecting from them? Are we expecting from them a share, an operating agreement, uh, just to share operating costs, or are we m making note of the fact that as of this point in time, they haven't contributed any capital to anybody? Including, including us. Okay, so once you get Augusta's point of view, whenever it comes, then you, you take it to a full council meeting and you discuss it again, or probably come back to a committee meeting. Okay. It'll, the next, the next likely time that this would be discussed, and I don't, I don't know this, but the next likely time that it would be discussed would be at our admin finance committee meeting in November, which is the second Monday in November, but. I don't know whether that's uh, usurped by Remembrance Day or not. Is it no? Is it, so it's still the second Monday in November. That would be the most likely place where we would discuss it again. Any other questions? Hearing none. We have no closed session here this evening. The chair is looking for the motion to adjourn. Mr. Bradley and seconded by Mr. Robertson. Both in favor? The motion is carried.